In this Premiere Pro tutorial, I will show you how to create this clean title animation, which includes a bit of a 2.5D look and a subtle shiny effect. And for this one, we'll mainly use the Essential Graphics panel inside Premiere, so this means that you'll need at least CC 2017.1 to be able to follow along. Before I move over to Premiere, a big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. A while ago, I traveled to Iceland to shoot a documentary, and to support the story, I needed some B roll footage from a puffin. We visited multiple places, but these beautiful and stupid birds were nowhere to be found. But luckily, for these kind of things, Storyblocks has got me covered. Storyblocks offers a massive library with high quality stock videos, images, audio, sound effects, and video editing templates. You can choose one of their affordable monthly or annual plans based on your needs. So follow the link in the video description to check out Storyblocks and get unlimited access to their constantly growing library. Ok, now it's time to move over to Premiere and start some editing. Inside Premiere I'll start by creating a new sequence. In the project panel I'll click on the new items icon and then select sequence. And then I'll go into the settings tab and change this into a 4K sequence. Of course, you can also use 1080p or any resolution that you like. And now I can click OK to create the sequence. And then we'll start by creating the background for the title animation. I'll do this with a color mat, so inside the project panel, click on the new items icon and select color mat. And then I'll use the same settings from the sequence and click OK. And next we need to select a color. For this one, I'll use something off-white with a bit of a blue tint. I think something like this will work, but of course we can change this later on if we want to. And finally, let's rename the color mat into background and then click OK. Now we can add this color mat onto the timeline and then zoom in on the timeline and then extend the duration to about 10 seconds. And then with the color mat selected, I'll head over to the Lumetri color panel and go to the vignette section. And in there, move the amount slider to the left to add some darker vignetting to the edge of the frame. Not too much and try to keep it subtle. It might not look like much, but if I turn this on and off, you can see the difference. Ok, that's it for the background for now, let's add some text. And we'll come to do this with the type tool, which you can enable here or hit the T key to enable it. And then I'll just click somewhere in the program monitor and type the word Storysium. And then click somewhere else and type Premiere Pro Tutorials. You can exit type mode by hitting the escape key and then go back to the selection tool by hitting the V key or click this icon here. Now we can move over to the essential graphics panel to change some settings of the text. I'll start by adding some space between the characters, and we can do this by increasing the tracking. In this case, I'll set it to 100. And then I'll center align the text by clicking this button here. And by the way, I'm using the Montserrat Thin font for this example, but of course, you can use any font you prefer. Next, I will also adjust the other text layer. Let's start by increasing the size of the text. And again, let's also add some space between the characters and then align the text. Next I'm going to reposition the text layers by dragging them to this line inside the program monitor. And by the way, if you don't see these red lines, then click on this wrench icon here and then make sure that Snap in Program Monitor is enabled. Ok, next I'm going to stylize the text a bit further. I will double click on the word Storysium and then select the first part Story. I'll give this first part another color, let's select Orange, why not? I'll hit OK to apply and then move over to the timeline to extend the text layer and match this with the length of the background layer. And then I'll move over to the effect controls panel and enable keyframes for scaling by clicking on this stopwatch icon. I'll move this first keyframe with value 100 somewhere over here, then change the value to 75 and this will create the second keyframe. I'm going to make this scale zoom animation a bit smoother by right clicking on the keyframe and then select ease in for the last one and ease out for the first one. And these two keyframes will now give us this scale or zoom animation. Ok, so now we've got the text base animation or base layer ready and we can make a couple of duplicates. You can do this by selecting the layer on the timeline, then hold the ALT or COMMAND key combined with the left mouse button and then drag it up to create a copy. And here we're going to duplicate two times, so in total we've got three identical text layers. In the next steps, we're going to add a couple of effects. I'll head over to the effects panel and search for the drop shadow effect and apply this to the mid text layer. And the next one that we need is the Gaussian blur effect. I will apply this one to the bottom text layer. In the next steps, we're going to give the text a shiny look. And to do this, we need to select the top text layer and then inside the program monitor, select both text layers by holding the shift key. And with both text layers selected, we can now change the text color into white. And after that we can head over to the effect controls panel and go to the opacity section. 
and then click on this pen icon to enable the free Draw Bezier tool and then draw a mask inside the program monitor like this. We're going to animate this mask by enabling keyframes on Mask Path. This has created the first keyframe. We can now move a couple of frames forward and then change the position of the mask all the way to the right of the text. And by adding this mask and two keyframes, we've now added this shiny effect to the text. And if you want to make this go faster or slower, you can always play around with the timing of the keyframes. Next to this, you can also further improve the look of the shiny effect by increasing mask feather. And with these two adjustments, it will look like this. In the next steps, we're going to animate the rotating shadow effect. You can use this on text, but also on logos like I showed in the beginning of this tutorial. First, I'm going to select the mid text layer and then head over to the effect controls panel to the drop shadow effect. And then increase the distance and softness until you get something that looks like this. And then I'll enable keyframes for direction and move this first keyframe to the same point on the timeline as the last keyframe for scaling. And then change the shadow direction until it will rotate to about 180 degrees, like this. And then move this keyframe to the beginning in line with the first scale keyframe. And just like with the other two keyframes, we're going to make this a bit smoother by right clicking the keyframe and select Ease Out for the first one and Ease In for the second one. And if I now give this a playback, you can see that the shadow will rotate behind the text, like this. And for the final part of this tutorial, we're going to select the bottom text layer and then move over to the effect controls panel. Because we've copied the first text layer, we've also got the keyframes for scale here. We don't need this animation here, so we can remove the keyframes and then change this into a single value of 800. And now that it's huge compared to the other text layers, it's time to add some blurriness. In the Gaussian blur effect, I'm going to increase blurriness to 250. And as you can see, this will make the characters a lot softer and blend in perfectly with the rest of the picture. As a final step, I'm going to animate the position of this text layer. I'm going to enable keyframes for position. I will move this keyframe to the end and then change the position horizontally and this will create another keyframe. And finally, I will move this keyframe to the beginning and this completes our text animation. Let's have a look at the final result. And that concludes this Premiere Pro tutorial. If you want to see more similar videos with text animations inside Premiere, then check the video that I'll link at the end of this one. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then please like the video or leave a comment below. I would really appreciate that. And that's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.